Russ, where does uh, Cassandra Webb fit in the world of Marvel? Yeah, this is a fascinating one because, I mean, this is an, a Sony property. And so what they've done is they really want to hold on to the Spider-Man kind of oh, universe, as it were. So this is the spider universe that they're really trying to develop. So this is kind of goes down the same track as, say, Morbius, Venom, and then also the upcoming Craven films that are going to be going on. With this brings in all the female di dimension. So it's, a, it's an interesting one, but I'm not sure, Laura, if they really delivered on this as far as understanding what her purpose and mm. why she's even relevant at all. I don't know, well, what are your thoughts? I agree, because if you're looking at this movie as the origin story of Madame Web, which it's meant to be, I don't feel like they did a strong, en strong enough job of really establishing the backstory of her character. You know, you get a you get a touch and look, there may be some spoilers in this conversation, heads up as we talk about this, but oh, yeah. You, yeah. You, Spoiler alert. <laughs> you get a sense of, you know, who her mum was, this woman who is a right. scientist investigating this particular spider that is in Peru, and that is how uh, Cassandra does end up with some of the powers that she has, part of that back story and so you know that it's like okay this is who Cassandra's mum was this is when she was born this is kind of like the touch right. on her power but they don't really develop the character of Madame Webb in terms of explaining like where does she exactly fit what is the significance of what later we find out in the movie is uh, sort of uh, sort of her secret powers I would say in some respect the way that her mind fits into her overall powers it I I didn't really get a sense of like who Madame Webb was and then you're supposed to be believing that she's going to be the next kind of matriarch of this part of this whole kind of spider-verse as right. you put it and i think that that's one of the biggest struggles i mean i think that's probably one of my biggest knocks it's not that i'm anti dakota johnson but i just don't think that dakota johnson necessarily has the charisma to kind of carry this kind of character the way that she acts and the way she, her persona is you just don't really like her and so the, the problem is it's kind of hard to engage with her or find her appealing um, when you're kind of going why why do i even care about this character and so I, I think she doesn't have you know say the robert downey jr kind of coolness about him or maybe the james mcavoy kind of proven intellect and so i really found that it was the casting that was kind of tough on this one but then on top of it all these characters these supposed teens that look like 30 year olds they're supposed to be a, an outfit a unit a troop mm. or whatever you want to call it and i never really felt like they had any chemistry um themselves within themselves but it was really forced and quite quick so mm. i guess i can understand that but i just wasn't quite sure that the whole thing gelled as far as the group itself yeah there was a dynamic there's a little bit that was a little bit strange because even with like the baddie Ezekiel he constantly has these moments in the movie where he's he's under threat because the three you know teenagers that you mentioned there he has these premonitions that they're going to be the people that one day kill him so he's trying to find them and make sure that right. he kind of kills them first so that they don't get to him and that's kind of his whole objective in the movie but he keeps saying you know if they get me they're going to destroy all I have become and this kind of empire but he's not really proven to be some kind of big entrepreneur or billionaire whatever he's doing like i you don't really understand who he is so it's like what is this big thing you're trying to protect and stop from being destroyed because who even are you you know like exactly. we know who he is in terms of the plot but you don't have a sense of why who he is matters and why these girls would be so you know sort of hell-bent on like getting him and why there would be any particularly terrible consequence if they destroyed what he was doing and you're like so there's kind of no like wait to the the story like the disconnection between all the different pieces which is meant to be the story of a web like given how disconnected it is reflecting that idea it's right. like what are you doing it was really really kind of hard to pin down exactly what was going on with this movie and why it did feel so fragmented oh it was it, it, that's one of the big challenges with these films as far as character development i mean what have they done they haven't really done any character development on the villain but there really wasn't anything about him going oh wow wow he is so amazing or wow yeah. how did he get all this and all of a sudden you're like oh, i really don't know anything about him and then on top of yeah. it where was he from who was he because his accent changed throughout the whole film so mm. i really wasn't sure what was going on with that so there wasn't a good villain and then on top of it there's time travel i mean they all of a sudden she's all of a sudden in New York, then all of a sudden, what? She's in Peru, and then mm. she's back again, and then she drives around a cab that has no license plates on it or <laughs> tags on it, and it never gets stopped by that. I always find this no. fascinating. So there were all of these elements that were so disjointed. Mm. This one is going to make Morbius and the Marvels look like cinematic, um, just gems. Morbius 
and the Marvels, um, those those two films, which weren't all that great, and I wasn't really a big fan of either one of them, but I found that they were really, they actually had some value that went beyond this one. So this one kind of goes, fortunately takes the, the banner, it takes all the way down to the bottom rung of the ladder as far as quality of films in the whole MCU thing. But my favorite thing, okay, this is my favorite thing, especially as we're looking ahead to kind of the celebrations that might be going on in relationships and people wanting to go out to see movies together, or maybe as couples or as friends. I really think that this one definitely qualifies as the Phil and Claire Dumphy Award as being that time. If you want to go out and see a cinema, and you want to see a movie that really doesn't make you think at all, and you're just going to sit there and laugh at all the inappropriate times, and you're going to be sitting there going, oh, the popcorn's probably better than the movie, but really, more than anything, I'm investing in the person I'm with. And so that's when I think that this one really <laughs> wins that award for me because I was trying to find something positive, and that's where it's at. You can bond over trashing it, you know? I like that. Like if we, this is, I think it's um, uh, comedian Dustin Nickerson who says this, where he's like, the people that have the best relationships are the people that hate the same things because they kind of go, ah! And you like bond over like shared hatred as opposed to, you know, shared love of uh, certain right. stuff. So maybe that'll be Madam Webb for so many people. Like it, it is, it you know, it is fun. And yeah, we haven't even said anything about Sydney Sweeney uh, playing one of these characters. Like I do feel for her a little bit that this was released after after anyone but you and after she was kind of positioned in this other romantic comedy kind of world and then she's like into this one now but who knows will there be a sequel will we actually finally get to see the powers that these young girls are meant to possess i have no idea i don't know that it will get there but you can at least maybe start with madam webb russ yeah man we might be able to start with madam webb you know and hopefully all we can do is go up from here so i'm hopefully that we'll be able to see some other films that kind of come out and the thing is that you're still getting out to the cinemas i just i hope that people will be able to go out and enjoy a movie at the movies because that's what I would really encourage people to do especially over over the over the weekend and things but um, more than anything it, you know what there are worse things to do and you probably still can't enjoy the popcorn <laughs> while you're there enjoying the worse. relationship over the weekend. Oh, uh, yeah. There are worse things to do. Well with that we'll wrap it up but thank you for joining us on the watch list you can subscribe wherever you're listening to your podcast of course see video versions of this on the Hope 103 to YouTube channel as well and until next time we'll see you then. Bye!